Hello everyone, my name is Jack Murphy, and sorry if I look and sound a little off, I am a little sick right now, but I've been waiting a really long time to post this video. A year ago, I decided I wanted to take dividend investing seriously and build something that can help me a lot in the future, so I decided I was going to start making videos about dividend investing and kind of document my process every month. 12 months later, it is time for the one year review of dividend investing where I'm going to go over my results from my first year of dividend investing. And I think it gives you a pretty realistic view of what you can accomplish in your first year if you haven't started already. I'm going to give a little history for reference of this portfolio. When the GameStop kind of stock pump happened, uh, for reference, I was about 15. And about three weeks before that is when I started like investing, um, when I got the portfolio set up. And I put some of my first couple hundred bucks in there and just wanted to play around and try to learn. I got caught up in the... GameStop pump and dump and ended up losing most of the money I put into it and kind of got discouraged from investing. That kind of put me off for a couple months and then in the summer I started investing in crypto a little and then that kind of you know blew over because I invested during the peak and then I kind of picked up dividend investing in March of 2022 and that's when this portfolio was born for real. So going into March of 2022 I had about $300 and change in the portfolio, and then I started doing $50 a week contributions. Investing $50 a week is roughly $200 a month. If you plan on investing around $200 a month, then this portfolio will kind of be what you could see in your first year of dividend investing and the kind of dividend income you will be receiving in that first year. For most of the first year, you're not going to see a ton of growth, but you're just setting that foundation down so in the next years and years to come, it'll grow a lot faster, a lot quicker, and you'll be very happy you started. The first part of this portfolio I'm gonna go over is the dividend income. I'm gonna go over how much I got paid each month and then the total at the end of the year. In March of 2022, I got $2.25. Next month in April 2022, I got 86 cents. That was my lowest paying month. That's pretty cool to see how far we've come where the lowest is 86 cents. In May of 2022, I got $2.45. In June of 2022, I got $5.12. In July of 2022, I got $2.30. Followed up by August of 2022, where I got $4.22. Then in September, I got $7.71. October of 2022, I got $6.08. November of 2022, I got $6.71. And at the end of 2022, in December, I got $11.05. Then to start off 2023 in January, I got $6.77. And in February of 2023, I got $8.45. I got a couple extra dollars in early March of 2023 because I started this portfolio in March 8th of 2022. That's when I start counting it. So in total for the first year, I got $67.80. I understand that that doesn't seem like a ton of money for a year's worth of dividends, but considering in my first couple of months I was getting less than a dollar in dividend payments at some point, that is a pretty good number to see. And with the compound growth, I could assume that in the second year I'll probably see close to triple that number. Not quite triple unless I may be able to increase my compensations, but I think it is safe to say I'll see. 2.5x that number by March of 2024. At the end of the day, the dividend payments is the only really important piece of data from the first year results of this dividend portfolio because my goal in starting this dividend portfolio was maybe 10, 15, or 20 years in the future, being able to use these dividend payments to pay for my bills and give me the freedom to only work when I want to and not because I have to. I am going to go over my total portfolio performance and how each of my stocks did, but in the grand scheme of things, the only piece of data that's important for my goal is the dividend payments and the rest is just for fun and because I find it interesting. That leads me to the individual stock returns now. My first stock was 3M where I got it on March 8th. It is the worst performer in my portfolio, negative $61.65 which is a negative 27.12% return. Second position is Starbucks. I've been holding this since March 14th of 2022, and it is the highest returning position in my portfolio at a positive $54.81, which is a positive 24.46% return. The third position in my portfolio was Realty Income, ticker symbol O, and 
I opened this on April 5th, 2022. They've given me negative $19.57, which is a negative 7.84% return. I want to mention the dividend income I've received from all of these stocks is not incorporated into this data. So I have gotten back some of that money they have lost me. My fourth position in this portfolio was Main Street Capital. I started it on May 31st of 2022. I have negative 58 cents returns with them, which is a negative 0.74% which pretty much break even, especially considering I've gotten dividend payments from them, so I am technically in the positive. Target is another position I opened on May 31st, 2022, and I'm up $3.28 with them, and that is a positive 2.81% return. And the final position I opened on May 31st, 2022 was Lowe's, where I'm up $4.27 with them, which is a 5.03% return. On July 6th, I started my position on Outro Group, ticker symbol MO. I'm up $5.80 with them, which is a 4.46% return. Then later in the month on July 12th, I started a position in JP Morgan. I'm up $13.23, which is a 10.18% return. One of my favorite positions in my portfolio, SCHD, was also started on July 12th of 2022. This is a dividend ETF by the Charles Schwab Company, and I've actually been buying one share of them every month since then because I want this to be the biggest position in my portfolio and I really love the dividend income they give me. I am down $23.07 with SCHD, which is a negative 3.93% return. Again, in July, I opened my position in Intel, which was on the 19th of July. I am down 37 cents, which is pretty much break even at a negative 0.26% return. And the final position I started in July was Verizon on July 27th. I'm down $23.89, which is a negative 10.67% return. Jump forward to October 4th when I started my position in Apple. I'm up $15.33 with them, which is a positive 7.3% return. To end the year, I started a position in Procter & Gamble, which was on December 29th. I have a positive 21 cent return with Procter & Gamble, 0.18%, which is also pretty much break even. And the last position I added in 2022 was Johnson & Johnson, December 29th, 2022. I'm down $6.90 with them, which is a negative 6% return. To start off the year in 2023, I started a position in Pepsi on February 1st. I'm up $1.18 with them, which is a positive 2.36% return. And lastly, Jeppy. I started a position in Jeppy, February 27th, 2023. I'm down $5.94, which is a negative 2.75% return. To end the video, I'm on Charles Schwab, and I'm going over my portfolio's performance. I have the date set from March 8th, 2022. That is the first day I invested with the intention of making this my dividend portfolio to March 8th, 2023, exactly one year later. So if we go over to the Values versus Net Contributions tab, your account gained $80.36 from March 8th, 2022 to March 8th, 2023, excluding net contributions. So that doesn't count the money I added to the account. It is just the increase of value the account has made on its own. The beginning value was $320.34. That's about how much money I just had sitting in the account when it started. Net contributions, 2695 so I must have put more than $50 in at some point a couple times because 52 times 50 would be 2,600. So an extra $95 got in there somehow. Investment change, plus $80. Investments gain versus loss, plus $12.56. Income was $67.80. The ending value is $3,097.70. Now, once again, the investment gain versus loss isn't that important. It is nice to see a positive, but the real thing I want to be building in these early years is the investment income, and the investment gain versus loss doesn't really matter unless I'm trying to sell off some positions. If we look over rate of return, my account had a positive 4.45%, which is always great to see. And if you compare that to the S&P 500, Dow Jones, and NASDAQ, I beat all of them. Now, considering that I am managing the portfolio myself, it is unlikely I will be beating the NASDAQ and S&P 500 consistently, but it's cool to see that I did it this year. That was the results for my first year of dividend investing, and if you have time, check out this playlist right here. Every month since March of 2022, 
I document the progress of my portfolio and the dividends. So if you want to see it since day one, check out that now. Peace.